This is the first in a series of tutorials dealing with the creation of this pill bottle scene. Turns out this is a really good object to demonstrate a series of modeling approaches to something that looks pretty simple. But we're going to end up using lattices and a few other things to really help us form this well. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. In the start file, I've got this basic cube right here. So this is where we get to start. I'm going to press the tab key. And you can see that we have sort of the rounding on the top of the pill bottle. And this is where we're going to focus a lot of our time is up in this area here. So I'm going to come over here to edge mode. And we're going to come down to the loop cut function. And I'm going to click here. And then I'm going to set this to five cuts. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And then five cuts. Let me turn off X-Ray. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to create sort of the framework for the rounding that we're going to have right here. And we're going to use the bevel function to do this. But the bevel function does not add what I call bounding polygons. And because we're going to be wanting to really carefully control the rounding of our object here down into the flat area, we're going to first put a series of polygons in place that are going to function as bounding polygons. And this will make more sense as we progress through this. So I'm going to come up here because I want to select each of these corner edges. And it's a little bit tedious to do this all the way around. So in fact, what I'm going to do is come up to the select function right here. And we're going to do select sharp edges. And it'll just select all those there, which is really nice. Then what we're going to do is we're going to come over to the bevel function. Now, what we need to do is come up here and let's just set this to the default. So it's 1 with 0.5. And when we do that, it creates kind of the expected bevel that we would have. But what I want is for it to function a little bit differently. I want it to have two segments and I want the shape to be 1. And in fact, I think I want that to be just a little, let's put this at point 2, and you can play with how far you want that to go in. Let's do point 0.175, and I think that right there works pretty well. I'm going to click outside to deactivate those, and we're going to come up here again, and we're going to re-invoke that select sharp. In this case, I'm going to move in just a little bit closer, and I'm also going to change my tool my selection mode to active tool, and I'll show you why here in a second. We're still here in the bevel tool, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to change segments to 4, and we're going to keep this to 0 0.05, so I'm going to hit return. And when you're in active tool mode, what that allows you to do is simply click, hold, and drag. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out so that I'm about like that. I don't want to overlap this boundary set of edges that we created here. But what we've done with this is if I come over into the front view right here, if I zoom in, what we've done is we've created, let me select these, this will make more sense when I select them. If I double click this, hold the shift key and I double select that, we've created a row of transition polygons into these flat areas here to help keep the rounding in this area. So this is actually a really important thing to do when you're kind of setting up geometry like this. Okay. Okay, so let's take a look at the top here. You can see I've got the cap for the pill bottle. And I'm going to come in here and just show that it kind of fits in here. Now, I'm not going to be super neurotic about getting it to fit exactly at this point. So I'm going to come over here and I'm just going to turn off Turn all that off for right now so that we're not having to concentrate on that. So I'm in edit mode. I'm going to switch over to vertex mode and I'm going to select that single vertex right there. Press shift and S and we're going to do cursor to selected. So that's going to be sort of a working point for us right there. We're going to switch over to face mode here and let's come over now. I'm in active tool and I want to switch over to selection circle. Now I'm going to hold the shift key and I'm just going to select all of these right here in the middle, bring up the context menu, and we're going to delete those faces. So we need to create a round structure and we're going to transition from 
the squarish sort of aspect of our bottle to the perfectly round neck. So what I need to do is just count the number of transition edges that I need to go from this open edge here to a circular form. So we have a total of 16 edges. If we switch over into edge mode here. So we have four on this side, four over here and over here and over here. So that's 16. Cursor is right there, so I'm going to create a new object. So we're going to come up here and we're going to invoke the circle. It's going to be pretty huge. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to make this one inch. And let's change this immediately to 16 so that we get that there. And then I'm going to press the S key to scale this in so it gets in about like that. I just want it just sort of inside. Okay, now I'm going to hold the Shift key and I'm going to double click that open edge right there. When I bring up the context menu, we can come over here and we can just invoke bridge edge loops. And that creates that for us. Okay, so I'm going to double click here, bring up the context menu, and then we're going to fill from new faces. So we're just going to fill that. Switch over to face mode, and then we're going to come over to the inset faces, and we're going to pull that in about like that, and then we're going to extrude this one time, let go of the mouse, and then grab it and move it up like that. I'm going to bring up the context menu and I'm going to delete that face. So we have the basic structure now set up and we've just got a little bit of fine tuning work to do now to get the basic rounded curvature in place. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to remove just a little bit of the geometry that we have. We're going to be creating sort of a rounded structure here with our lattices and I think I'd like to rework the top just a bit. So I'm going to come over here, double click this edge, hold the shift key, and double click these edges. And then I'm going to bring up the context menu and I'm just going to dissolve these edges right there. Now we're left with some slightly odd geometry right in the middle here. You can see we've got this polygon. These are n-gons because they're polygons with more than four sides, but we can deal with this pretty easily. I'm going to press the K key and I'm going to click from here to here to here, hit return, and then I'm just going to do the same thing. You know, whenever you're doing symmetry like this, K key, you can always decide to just work return on one quadrant and use a symmetry function or a mirror them, but you ultimately have to decide whether it takes more work and more time and effort to do something that's supposed to be time saving, you know, than it is just to come over here and do them all by hand. Okay. So that's actually going to work pretty well for us, just having that set up as it is. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to prepare the geometry for use with a couple of lattices. Now, before we do anything else with the deformation lattice, let's come in here and do just a little bit more forming with this central neck area here. I think it's a little bit small, and I want to come in face mode, and I'm going to double click this, hold the shift key, double click, double click, and I want to scale out, but we want to scale from the 3D pivot point. So I'm going to press the period key here. We're going to come over to 3D cursor, S key. Now I can scale that up, and that's going to maximize sort of the size. I don't want it to run into these polygons, but I could. Let me just show you how we could do this. I'm going to press the S key, and I'm going to scale right so these vertices are pretty close to overlapping. They don't need to be exactly overlapping, but this is what we're going to do. I'm going to hold the Shift key and select those, switch over to vertex mode, bring up the context menu, and down at the bottom it says merge vertices. We're going to merge by distance. And the default value captured those four points, and it's telling me that right down here at the bottom. So that, that allowed us to sort of maximize the size right here. Okay, so now we're ready to actually apply a lattice. I'm going to come into the front view here, and let's go into x-ray mode. And I'm going to switch over here to selection box because 
I want to select these vertices at the top. These are the only ones that I want the lattice to operate on. So we're going to come down here to the object data properties, to vertex groups, and I'm going to click plus here. And let's double click that. And we're going to call that vertex group one. You got to make sure and click the apply button or the assign button right there. Okay. Press the tab key. Let's zoom out a little bit. We're going to come up and we're going to add a lattice. The lattice is going to be pretty big. Our object's fairly small. It's only about two inches. So I'm going to tap two here. And then I can get it centered basically where we're going to operate. Tab key. Actually, let's do this. Let's scale. So I'm going to press the S key, but I'm only going to scale along the Z direction there. Okay. S to scale a little bit more, and that's pretty good. You don't need to be super, super accurate with this. Okay, now we want to change this so that we have, let's do five by five. So if I rotate the view here now, we've got five by five. Let's go out of x-ray mode here. And we've got it in place, but we have to tell the two objects to communicate with each other. Now you'll note that we had collections selected, so it dropped it inside of here. So I'm just going to grab this and I'm going to move it up into the main scene here so we can see it. I'm going to call this lattice number one. Okay, come to the main object. Let's come down here to a modifier. and We're going to add a lattice modifier. Let's assign that to the lattice and we're going to tell the lattice to only affect our vertex group number one. Okay, so this is where the fun part comes in. Let's reselect the lattice, press the tab key to go, into, to go into edit mode, and then we can select, I'm holding the shift key now, all of these corner points, and now we can move these. Okay, so we've got just those moving. Go down just a little ways. It's an artistic discretion at this point. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to form it a little bit more. I'd like even just a bit more curvature in the central area. So I'm going to quickly select carefully these because you don't want to accidentally select interior vertices. So I'm just holding the shift key. Okay, there we go. And then these I can pull down just a little bit. Let's look at this in a front view. And you can just sort of survey the curvature that you have right there. And I think that works, I think that works pretty well. So leave edit mode, tab key, come back to our core object that we're actually modeling here. We're going to apply that lattice, and I'm going to turn off the display of that first lattice. Okay, so now we're ready to apply the second lattice. Okay, so before we add the second lattice, I'm going to come in here and press the tab key, and I'm going to have us operate on this sort of neck area right here. I'd like to produce a little bit more natural rounding, so we're going to come back to the bevel function. Let's give it some bevel there. I think four may be a bit much, so I'm just going to change this value to three. Perfect. We're going to, it's going to be a subdivision surface object. You don't need more data than you need. Okay. So let's come back into the front view here and create a new vertex group. So let's come into X-ray mode, vertex selection mode. We're in select box. So now I can just marquee across those, come down here. We're going to create a new vertex group that we'll call vertex group two, assign. That's important. Okay, press the tab key. And we're going to come back up here. We're going to assign our lattice. 
it's huge. So two inches, S key, scale it generally to the size you want, S key and then Z key. Okay, that works pretty well like that. Let's change this to a three by three by three size. So I'm going to change this to lattice number two. In our objects, we have to come over here and assign a lattice modifier so it can hook up to the lattice. Let's assign lattice two and the vertex group, or vertex group two. Now we come into edit mode for the vertex group tab key. And I'm going to select these interiors right there. In fact, let me leave x-ray mode. And we can move that up. And you can see how we're giving that top area a little bit more rounding. And in fact, we could also come over here to the center. Let's do this. It's, it's a little bit of a pain when you've got interior vertices. So I'm just being a little bit careful to make sure I don't select one on the interior. But now I can come and do it the opposite. I can pull it down sort of like that until you get kind of the shape that you want. Okay, so let's, let's turn on shading mode there so you can kind of see that. Tab key to leave it once you've gotten to the artistic look that you want. Come back to our main object. Click Apply, hide the lattice. Now we need to assign some shading here. So right click, smooth shade. We've got an artifact here that I've noticed will show up now and then with a lattice. So we need to come over here and turn on normals. Let's go to auto smooth. In fact, I'm gonna turn it up to 40. And then we can turn on a subdivision surface for our object. You can examine it. So there we go. We've got the basic formation for the pill bottle done.